Another fraught issue is the concept of party houses. We all saw a tragedy on, on Halloween was where there was a shooting with several deaths involved. So Airbnb says they're now cracking down on the party house idea. I don't know how they're going to accomplish that. Is there anything specifically in our ordinance that gets at that issue? Um, I would say that the uh, restrictions on the, the tightening up of restrictions and occupancies is the way we are approaching that issue. Uh, I think one of the comments that was made frequently uh, in the Mountain Mac meeting was, if you're allowing up to 15 people in a small house, you are basically inviting a party. Um, so, so there's that. Uh, and I think the other thing that's happened is we have tightened down the noise standards, not specifically here, but in this in this code section, but elsewhere. Uh, so, I guess what I would say is that the we've we've made the filter tighter to, to try and address parties associated with short term rentals, and we have other little tripwires out there in terms of noise that will allow code enforcement to respond after the fact, which is what we do uh, to address long standing party houses. If that, you know, so, that would be my response to that question. And that stepped up enforcement puts the onus back on the owner that if they don't want to have their permit suspended or revoked, they need to do the screening themselves and make sure people understand uh, what the rules are. I have a couple of questions and I thought the best way to do it would be to reference the actual ordinance and where my questions came up when we reading the final draft, if you don't mind. So when I, I looked at the map that you presented as a part of the presentation, and I know that in the third district, I have very little area that are not encompassed now in the mountain or the desert region, but Oak Glen sits on the boundary, and I can't tell whether it falls into that forest service area or the valley. Can you help clarify that for me? I believe Oak Glen, the majority will be in the mountains. Okay. There aren't many areas left um, in the county that then would be unregulated. Is that fair? Oh, I, I, the only other unincorporated areas in the valley would be like Bloomington, Mentone, some pockets in the West End. Okay. And so then just so I understand it, this ordinance will not cover those unincorporated areas and short-term rentals will be prohibited by de facto, correct? Right. Okay. I'm reading through and I, I get to um, line 22 in the ordinance where it talks about a short-term rental unit and what that is. And I completely agree with your definition of what a short-term rental is. And then that paragraph goes on to actually talk about the prohibitions. And it seems to be out of place that right there on line 24, where it begins, a short-term rental shall not be used for. And I don't understand why we have the prohibitions listed in the definition section. And can't we, if we want to have them there, can we not also reiterate them where I think it's super important to have, which is in on page 11, 9, 19, line 19, where we actually talk about what's prohibited. So if I want to buy a short-term rental, I want to know what I can and can't do. I might flip just to page 11 and go look at the prohibited use on line 19 in our ordinance. Uh, and it doesn't list anything there. It just tells me to go to the definition. I think at a minimum, even if you wanted to leave it within the definition of what is not a short term at all, that it would be appropriate to repeat that sentence. And Andy, you may have a reason, but it seems like we should spell out what's not allowed in the prohibition section. I would be fine with that. The is that okay? I tell people what they can't do, the sure. easier my job becomes. Yes. Okay. Posting of notices within the unit. It says in that first sentence, the county issued short term rental ordinance, uh, rental unit permit shall be posted on or adjacent to the front door. I hate to get nitpicky. Is that inside or outside? And then do we really have to post evacuation maps on the back of each bedroom door? <laughs> we think it's probably a good idea uh, just because in the case of an emergency, it's, what, it's, it's, it's the application of a basically a transient occupancy you would typically find in a motel. Yeah, but then we have those red exit lights on the backs of, I mean, right, right. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, I don't disagree that it should be on the back maybe of the front door with the instructions when people check in, but it seems very redundant and onerous to the owner of the vacation rental to have it on the back of every bedroom door. It's a, it's a, I think it was meant to be inside, 
I, I would love for you to do that because if you have a code enforcement officer that goes out to rural Joshua Tree and interprets that line of the ordinance that it should be outside, I think we should make this as clear and, and spell out our intent. I would point out, though, that the title of that paragraph is Posted Notices Within the Unit. It helps. To remove that vagary, I would think even being redundant wouldn't hurt. So I know that this was a lively discussion at the Planning Commission meeting, whether to include or not include the, um, the ADUs, and that the final consensus was to allow them as long as there was someone that was residing in one of the two dwelling units as a primary residence. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? So when we look at density, and if you go into the village of Joshua Tree, where houses are very close together, you could have two neighbors that are within even a half acre lot right there. And both of them within that half acre space could be individual owners that have short term rentals. Then you go out to a 10 acre or 20 acre parcel and you have one house and an ADU. And we say only one of those two can be. Would it be possible to consider a minimum acreage requirement for having that ADU and the primary dwelling unit both be short term rentals? if it's above two acres, two and a half acres, things like that, because they're already going to be considered in the denser areas to be allowed. I, I would say a two acre and above um, to allow both dwelling units to be permitted for AD or for short-term rentals would be my request. And the good news is that's it. So that's staff direction to take a look and bring that back to modify this ordinance in the future. Well, Either if we this has to it's 30 days from the date that we pass it so today if we as a board can agree on the language no no we need to re-notice it for the public yeah we yeah. would have to have another reading because I, I believe that acreage requirement plus the planning commission also reviewed uh, this ordinance so we would probably have to um, think about whether um, particularly with that change you were just talking about would need to go back to the Planning Commission. I, I believe that the intent is for us to keep on working on this in the context of accessory, I mean, excuse me, alternative structures. Perhaps we could address that issue in that in the context of that conversation. With all due respect, it takes us a long time to get Understood. things done at the county. Understood. So I wouldn't, we don't want to lose the momentum. I was going to say, I wouldn't mind postponing this for another 30 days to add that acreage in and then continue to work towards those non-traditional structures. Hello, my name is Thomas Fjellstam. I live in Joshua Tree. I'm the founder of the Joshua Tree Vacation Rentals Association. We have 380 members currently represent the Morongo Basin. This uh, ordinance has been a long time coming. We started in 2015 with uh, when the initial proposal was made. If we need to spend the time to get it just right, I think another month to fix things is, is, uh, is not too much to ask. Uh, I want to thank uh, Supervisor Rao's office in this past year that she's been in office to being really responsive to our community and uh, uh, getting a read on what's going on from both the community and from the hosts. And uh, I want to thank land use and code enforcement for, for all the years that we've been working on this. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I wanted to thank you first. Uh, my name is Clint Stoker. I live in the desert. I've lived there my entire life. I wanted to thank uh, the Planning Commission, Board of Supervisors, uh, Code Enforcement, and especially Don and her office staff for all the hard work that went into getting this ordinance to the place we're at now. Um, I wanted to uh, thank Don for her comments today regarding ADUs, as that was one kind of sticking point that had been in a lot of uh, our minds as as responsible hosts in the desert. My couple issues, trash pickup in our area, there's some many houses that are at the end of long dirt roads where trash pickup may be available, but yet there's no other reason for a trash truck to be down there and they might have to drive like a mile out of their way or half a mile down some road. As far as registration, I noticed on Terry's slide that it said a digital signature is acceptable. Um, in the planning commission meeting, staff said that didn't use the word signature, they used the word digital acceptance. And it's one of the bits of language I had asked for them to have in the ordinance um, that a digital acceptance would be something that would be allowed um, rather than having to get DocuSign or something involved to actually have a digital signature, a true digital signature. 
Um, so I'm hoping that digital acceptance would be something that would be acceptable. Uh, and then also the ADUs, I'd like to see them rented individually because two houses right next door to each other can be rented separately, but like an ADU on a one or two or three acre property that can't be rented, you know, like the house and the, the ADU can't be rented individually according to these rules. And I think that's kind of excessive uh, regulation. And my last thing that I would really like to move forward with and put in the, your guys' uh, thoughts would be the issue of the TOT that's being raised by these uh, short-term rentals. Um, as a community of Joshua Tree, we are always looking for creative ways to fund some uh, projects within our community. And I think the additional TOT monies that's collected through the county that now goes into the general fund would be something fantastic if we could redirect some of those funds back into our local community to help enrich both uh, short-term but also long-term um, homeowners' lives. Fire safety, I think fire is like a big experience. Um, I'm not sure how to work that out, but I think uh, with inspections and clear rules that fires should be allowed in the desert area. We have a lot of land, I understand the mountain area, it's a lot tighter, there's a lot of trees, um, but there's a lot of room also on properties. And I think fire, if it's done and inspected and, and that people have clear rules for their guests, which would be part of the process that they that they could be a good, still a good part of the experience. As far as fires, I know that it's banned currently in the mountain region. I. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing that in our area as well. We have just as huge of a fire risk currently. And, uh, you know, our power gets shut off all the time right now because of fire risk. And I would not mind um, if my rentals in Joshua Tree were not allowed to have a solid wood burning uh, fire outside. And that's it. Thank you so much. I am very pleased that we uh, have finally, after years of hard work, um, passed an ordinance to regulate uh, short-term rentals of the desert region. Yeah, like I said, we've been working on this since uh, 2015, and uh, it's been very slow going, but this last final push has really uh, allowed us to tune up a lot of the language, and it's changed quite a bit, and I believe that as a host, that all the changes have been very positive um, in terms of getting the regulations in, in a very um, uh, a, a form that's that's you know not over regulating but you know fair to the host and then also for the community because I talked to a lot of community members that they, that they seem to be very happy that I think this is going to be able to mitigate a lot of issues in terms of noise and too many uh, party houses and that kind of thing I think this will help shut it down with with the uh, possibility of losing a permit. Um, hosts will be a lot more likely to to uh, to have regulations to keep them from from uh, creating these types of situations and, and I think that'll be the, for the benefit for everybody. Absolutely yeah we've uh, you know she is our local representative and we've been working with her office um, since she took office um, in an effort to really push this uh, issue forward. We, we've been operating um, without rules to regulate us for a long time and as uh, local hosts in the desert we're very happy that uh, we've gotten to this point where now we'll be able to obtain a permit and um, have some legitimacy to what we've already been doing for several years.